Hi everybody. This video I wanted to wish Happy Mother's Day to all the daughters of narcissistic mothers out there who are doing it on their own, who are raising kids without help, without having a mother showing them the ropes. It takes so much power and resilience and just mental fortitude to break the cycles of generational trauma. And I can share with you a little bit of my experience. You know, I can tell you that um, not only did I have one narcissistic mother, but actually I've had the privilege of having two. And I can tell you that tale, you know, um, when I was in my 20s, I left my home country and I went traveling. And, uh, you know, I was a bit of a nomad for a while and I landed in Asia and I lived in Asia for several, several years. I lived there for about 10 years. And while I was there, uh, eventually I met my partner there. And, you know, my partner's great, you know, um, we, we hit it off, had a good, healthy relationship. You know, of course, every relationship has its ups and downs, but, um, you know, he's always been a very good, supportive, caring person. He's the kindest person I've ever met. But unfortunately, he comes from a place where I've encountered uh, cultural narcissism in a very extreme way. When his family met me initially, they didn't think much of it because they didn't think that the relationship was going to be serious. But at some point, you know, I accidentally got pregnant and we decided that we were gonna stay together. And that was when everything turned south. When I got pregnant, his mother had decided that she didn't want a white woman in her house. She wanted him to marry an Asian girl, you know? And, and she did everything in her power, not only to get rid of me, but also to keep my child. So I was in a foreign country, pregnant, and she was doing everything she could to get rid of me. And since my child, you know, we found out it was gonna be a boy, boys are very valuable, you know, in some countries, you know, it's, it's a privilege to have a boy in the family. And so, yeah, she did everything she could to get rid of me. And my husband could have easily chosen differently. And I was very lucky that that didn't happen. But I can tell you that, to make a long story short, we ended up having to run in the middle of the night to hide from them because the abuse had gotten so, so bad. And in fact, you know, I can tell you that his sisters even got like physically violent with me while I was holding my newborn child in my arm, you know, and it, it, that's a whole story onto itself. Um, I'm not gonna get into details of that, but, it was absolute hell and you know then what happened was that I had to um, I called my dad of course the good parent and um, told him what was happening and then my dad told me you know you have a room come home transition back to your home country we'll, we'll, we'll help you do that there's a baby involved and such so I said okay so I went back you know we took the trip back um, home and then throughout that transition period I, I, I didn't last in that house more than three months as soon as I landed and I went back into their house everything it, it was as if I never left you know my mother's after I we explained to them what had happened you know we told them what happened we sat down and I told my mother about the racist the, the, the racism that I went through while I was there and the, the attacks, the, the manipulation, the, 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 you know, all the different ways in which that woman tried to destroy, you know, the relationship that I had with my partner. Um, after I told her all about, about all that, you know what she asked me? She said, is his mother pretty?
You know, Asian women are really beautiful. How about his sisters? Were they pretty? What do you think? You know, they have nice skin. And she started talking about the physical traits of Asian women and how beautiful they are and such. And, you know, of course, I had just told her like a horror story of what happened while I was there. And the fact that during that time, while we were hiding from his family, my baby slept in a box for the first week in his life with blankets. Of course, we made it very cozy for him, but we had to leave everything behind and go into hiding. Um, that's how bad it was, you know? It was absolutely traumatizing experience to go through that. And, um, you know, after, after that story, of course, my mother made it all about herself. And when I got upset that she was asking me if, they, if um, his mother was pretty or not, and his sisters, if they were pretty or not, and asking me to, you know, describe how they looked like and such, I got upset. And then, of course, right away, as narcissists do, they will take your reactions to their antagonisms, to their manipulation, and they will use it against you. So what she did was that she said to me, she attacked my character right away, and then she said to me, no wonder that my husband's family rejected me. You make one mother suffer, you make all mothers suffer. Those were my mother's words. Those three months that I spent in that house, it was right after pregnancy. I mean, that whole year, it was the worst, one of the worst, most traumatic, that whole period, really, you know? It was so traumatic, and at one point, I, I'll even tell you that, um, you know, she hit me in the face when I was holding my newborn child while I was sitting down and giving him milk because I didn't smile properly, because I didn't, you know, because she got insulted at, at at my face, at my facial expression, as she always did. The fight she created, you know, the fictional fights that she would create when I was a child and a teenager continued on, you know, even if, even though I didn't see her for 10 years and even though I was so desperate to have a mother in my life. And, you know, when I moved out, when we moved out, I moved out, I wasn't ready, oh, you know, I, I, I have to add this, you know, during that period as well, of course, my sibling, the golden child, who's very well off, I mean, very, very comfortable, always, he was pushed towards success, you know, he called me while she was smearing my name, while I was there, like a month after I arrived with the newborn child, and I had also developed a blood clot in my leg. At the same time, I couldn't walk. I was absolutely traumatized by what happened in Asia, you know, the last bit of it, you know. And um, he berated me. He was angry at me that I didn't get a job yet and that I was milking my parents for money. Why don't, don't you get a receptionist job, he said to me. You know, it's normal that you guys are fighting your character. Again, my character, my character, my character. And you know, it's exhausting what you're doing to your family. And everybody was absolutely punishing me. That's how it felt like, you you know? They were punishing me while at the same time offering breadcrumbs, you know? This help that they offered came with absolute psychological abuse and conditions. And this, you know, of course I moved out as soon as I could. I got a minimum wage job. My husband, he had to, um, he had to um, wait to get his paperwork done, of course, because he was an immigrant. He chose to immigrate here, and he went no contact with his entire family after the way that they treated me, you know? Um, and so he was waiting for his paperwork. I had to pretend that I was healthy to get a job. I got a $13 an hour job, you know? It was, and I, you know, it was absolute poverty to take care of three people while I was sick and, and so unwell. And, and I was still being forced to continue having a relationship with that woman who actually, like I said, hit me in the face while I was holding my newborn child in my arms. When that happened, everybody did this, la 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 la, that's what they all did. My, my father made a rule that, uh, you know, she wasn't allowed to hold my child but I was to continue having a relationship with her and everything was going to be wonderful and, and happy and fine from that point onwards. And the dysfunction continued on. And you know, this is what I want to tell you about, this is all, you know, there's a point to this. 
a lot of times when we go no contact, when we try to distance ourselves, when we debate whether we should continue having those people in our lives or not, guilt will show up. And we will often think about the things they did for us, you know, the breadcrumbs that were put out for us, you know. And, and these things will be reinforced by enablers, too. I mean, I, 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 you guys know, those, those of you who've been watching my videos, you know that it took me hundreds of times. I mean, we're talking about 40, 40 years of abuse before I actually went no contact for good. And it was those things that were always leveraged against me. Oh, they took you in when you were homeless. So now you need to have a relationship with a person who hurts you and who continue hurts, who continues hurting you, and who put your baby in danger. You know, everybody will gang up. Therapists, friends, family, friends, family, all of them, the whole system. Everybody continuously always tells the scapegoat, "Oh." But they did this for you. They did that for you. They gave you this. They bought you groceries. They did that. But you know what? Here's the thing. Nothing. There is no currency that can buy your safety. There is no currency that can be measured, that can be exchanged against your mental health, against your emotional safety, against your well-being. You understand? Healthy relationships don't have these you know, don't have abuse that walks hand in hand with those good moments. But that's what the trauma bond is about. The trauma bond is there because you have the good moments. You have those good times. You have those look favors. You have those moments where you feel, oh my gosh, you know, maybe I am loved. Maybe, maybe I do belong here. Look at this, you know, something kind is happening towards me. And then all of a sudden things turn around so quick and then the verbal abuse, the psychological abuse, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, you know, all the things that scapegoats have to go through, it will resume in these cycles. And every time that we try to go no contact, every time that we minim that, that we feel, you know, that we feel like we want to take distance, always comes that guilt created by the good moments and by the breadcrumbs of help that have been offered along the way. Nothing, 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 nothing is exchangeable for your safety. Nothing, nothing, okay? And so you gotta be mindful of how guilt comes up when it does because I know that this is common that a lot of us scapegoats, you know, we weren't equipped to deal with life and we, you know, we've made make mistakes and of course it's so natural for anybody to, run home and ask for help for a family when you make a mistake but in narcissistic family systems favors are going to be leveraged and used against you favors are going to be leveraged and used to make you feel guilty about wanting to set healthy boundaries for yourself you know make you feel guilty about protecting yourself make you feel guilty for having limits making you feel guilty for wanting safety for yourself for your children guilt is is going to come up no matter what you do and this false sense of responsibility is going to come out no matter what you do so become mindful of how guilt manifests for you become mindful of how false responsibility manifests for you okay yeah they may have done some stuff and that's because abuse is never just bad all the time that's why people become stuck in those cycles because there are good moments you know because there are things that we hold on to which are not representative of the whole picture you understand it's just not it's not. You have to look at the whole picture and not just those few things that were given or laid out to you, okay? Nothing excuses abuse, nothing. There's no gift that they could have ever given you that could cancel out abuse, even if you had moments of peace with some family members who sat with you and who were understanding with you. If the cycles persist, right? You know, these cycles persist on and on and on and on. This is not healthy for you. And those people are not safe for you. They're not safe for you. Anybody who leverages things they give you or, or good moments against abuse is not safe. This is psychological manipulation, okay? And that's not how healthy relationship works, okay? 
uh, I'm a mother now. Okay, I'm a mother now. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you, this Mother's Day, my focus is on my kids. My focus is on ensuring their emotional well-being. You know, if I have troubles, if I have hardships, then I talk to my husband. I go see, you know, a coach or a therapist. You know, actually, I have a really good coach that I talk to at the moment. She's wonderful. And that's what I do. I don't burden my children with my own with my own problems. And my children are not responsible for my well-being. I am responsible for my children's well-being. When my kids feel emotional, those emotions belong to them. And I am mature enough to understand that it's not personal. A child, you know, a child needs a parent to guide them through those scary emotions. And also, you know, teenagehood, by the way, teenagehood is not a freaking personal attack on a parent, okay? my One of my kids is going through teenagehood right now. It's not personal. You know, they have hormones. They're going through hormones. They're going through changes. They're going through, you know, they're learning about life. You know, whatever they do and however they react, you know, it's not their fault. And it's my responsibility to make sure as a good mother that I'm there for them and that they know that I love them throughout this whole process. Okay, this is motherhood. Okay, motherhood is being there for your children, not your children serving you. So for this Mother's Day, I wish you, you know, all daughters of narcissistic mothers who are doing it on the way on their own a wonderful mother's day and you know breaking generational trauma is one of the most powerful things that you could ever do for your children and so if you're a mother and you have kids and you come from an arc family system if your mother is a is an, an you know is a scapegoated you or your family members scapegoated you you know what? You are so strong and keep doing what you're doing. Break the generational trauma. Focus on your kids and focus on yourself. Protect yourself. Protect your mental health. Prioritize your well-being. Okay? Your kids need you to do that. Your kids need you to prioritize your well-being so that you can then be a healthy person and you can be healthy with your kids. Okay? So that's what I got to tell you for today. And um, that's it, guys. Listen, happy Mother's Day to all scapegoated mother daughters out there who are doing it on their own is my message. You girls rule. Okay? I'll see you soon. Bye.